Welcome back to the AWS Institute Masterclass in Artificial Intelligence. In this module, we'll discuss how to get started with machine learning and artificial intelligence, including generative AI. And it all starts with the identification of an opportunity, an opportunity that adds high value to your organization and viably and responsibly be realized using machine learning technologies. To identify such opportunity, it's a good practice to form a cross-functional team consisting of a subject matter expert that knows your organization and their processes and is able to spot opportunities that lead to high value. A subject matter expert that can judge the technical feasibility of machine learning technologies and is aware of their capabilities as well as the limitation. Just one example, large language models are able to generate plausible sentences but do not have a real understanding of the world. And lastly, a subject matter expert who can facilitate the overall discovery process. I think you're so right, actually, on this need for cross-functional teams. You know, I've seen it. I've seen it actually go wrong when people haven't done that. It's just so disappointing all the energy they put in. You know, thinking about a bank actually, where they they had a load of technical experts building out a really interesting technical ML solution to categorize transactions and build a model of the behavior, but they never talked to their line of business teams, and so they never actually managed to get it into production because without the line of business teams, you're never going to find the right use case to use this. So it, it was kind of stalled and stymied, which is a shame after all that work. Um, also, I've seen it go the other way, where business teams kind of go too far without bringing in the data experts or the technical experts. In you know, one particular case where they went a really long way down scoping this use case and quantifying everything we could do, and then discovered when they talked to the data people that actually the data they thought they could get hold of would be really difficult. Perhaps it was managed by a third party supplier, They'd need to have contract changes to make that data available. There'd be additional costs. That actually torpedoed the entire project. Yes, you're so right. I, I've seen this various times. And actually building such a cross-functional team at the start can really help to create a backlog of opportunities that support you and your general leadership to envision the overall opportunity that you can tap into using machine learning within your organization, but as well help you to prioritize the different opportunities against each other. And doing this prioritization, you can define a set of different factors that cover technical feasibility, helping you to judge if a machine learning mod model and solution can be built, to help you decide if it's worth and desired building, and a factor to judge on viability for your organization, helping you to judge if you can viably operate that solution on the long term. So coming back to the examples you just shared, you want to make sure at the very beginning that you have the data available to realize an opportunity, as well as that a business process that might be improved, also can be approved and adapted towards a new uh, method or a new flow. To foster responsible use of artificial intelligence, it's recommended to include diverse backgrounds, perspectives, skills and experiences in the prioritization to reflect the overall impact and consider requirements for security, privacy, explainability, auditability and legal compliance. Once you've done this prioritization, you should discuss the results with your executive leadership team in order to drive alignment and form a first understanding of what capabilities must be built to develop such a machine learning model and to secure the required resources for the development of a first pilot. So, so far we've talked quite a bit about the people and the organization side, which is really important, but perhaps it would be helpful if we think about machine learning from the perspective of the life cycle or the stages that you have in a machine learning model life cycle, life stage. I actually worked on AWS's well-architected framework MLNs, which is a, a document available on, on the internet. And we use there this diagram that actually illustrates this. So as you talked around identifying the opportunity, that maps onto the business goal. How do you identify the first business goal, characterize the business value, and be very crisp and precise about that? The next stage is really how do you then formulate that into a problem, taking uh, an analytical framing for what would I do with data and algorithms to actually tackle that problem? Thereafter, the side of data, gathering the data that you need, perhaps transforming the data, creating features in the data that the machine learning can grasp onto in using the algorithm to create the models. Then the model development itself, which approaches will you use, which algorithms will you use, or would you use generative AI? And if so, which foundation models would you use and how would you actually go about using them? 
And then moving on to the area of deployment. So taking what you've built and your, your experiment in each world and deploying it into production so that it can be used by everybody before monitoring it and actually capturing how accurate is it, how well is it being used, how quick, how performant, how expensive, how much value is it creating for us. And each of these needs to go in a big circle. We actually drive kind of a continuous improvement cycle as we go around this loop. So you can see from the monitoring, it might inspire you to do more business problems, or it might inspire you to go back and rebuild the model to be more accurate. In fact, although it's a single cycle, you can often see kind of little loops within it as you go back from trying to build out a model and thinking, maybe if we had more data, Maybe if we pulled in more data and different feeds, we could build out better features and build a better model. Or maybe monitoring the accuracy, discovering it's not actually quite good enough and going back to that model development stage to build a better model that's more accurate and more effective. So you could go round and round these mini loops as well as round and round the overall loop to drive that continuous improvement we need. So this loop will show you that operating machine learning models substantially differ to operating traditional software. So it requires leaders to transform the organization so that they can operate machine learning models. And up until now, these machine learning models were mostly trained on your very own data and you were the owner of the resulting machine learning model. Now with the availability of foundation models, you can also use third-party models that are pre-trained on vast amount of data that do not belong to your organization. This can be a huge accelerator, but also introduces additional dependencies and responsibilities. Let's take an example. Imagine you want to build a conversational interface like a chatbot that uses user feedback to continuously improve over time. By doing so, the data from your user becomes an integral part of the model development cycle. So it's your responsibility to collect this data responsibly, assure that you can use it in the intended need and that you reduce the bias that is or might be in the data before introducing it into the, back into the model development lifecycle. You're absolutely right. There's so much care needed in this area. I wonder if we could think about yeah, a bigger example. You know, Swindon Borough Council is a, a local government organization in England, and they had, a, they had an interesting example, which is about fly tipping, which is not a very common sort of thing to think about initially when you think about artificial intelligence and machine learning. Fly tipping is actually where folks dump their waste where they shouldn't. So instead of, like you or I would, getting the council to come and collect it or taking it to the waste and amenity site, they just go and throw it in some lane or back alley and leave it for somebody else to deal with. And that somebody else dealing with it usually involves one of the other residents ringing the council and the council having to come out and collect it. So they wanted to use artificial intelligence in this area to see if it could be improved. Could they make it quicker for citizens to report it? Could they make it more effective so that AI could actually detect what has been dumped? Maybe critically figure out what kind of size vehicle we need to bring. You know, is it going to be a sofa that needs a, a large pickup truck? Or is it something simpler? Or actually, is it toxic waste? Is it maybe related paraphernalia from drug abuse? where we need to go and collect it quickly and try and dispose of it before it causes even more harm. So a number of different challenges there. They put together a cross-functional team, as we were talking. They brought together their customer service people with their digital team who built out the app, with their waste collection people, with also the data and IT people. And they joined all these together to think about how they could tackle this. And you think about it, it's actually quite a cross-functional application, it transforms different parts of the business. So it's going to change the way citizens engage with the council and report. It's going to change the customer service workload. It's going to change the way the waste management team behave and, and how they're going to respond to, to different incidents, perhaps even change the rostering and the routes. It's also going to change the IT in terms of the data, the data capture and records management. All of these put together is quite a bit. They, tackled this project and actually the whole project took three months from the idea through to the deployment really quite quick and really effective and they did this with the delivery of just four people four people in this team and now Swindon are actually saving three thousand pounds a year on the fuel costs alone and obviously the environmental benefits as well carbon not being wasted but more than that it's actually saving the council over two thousand hours every year in terms of the cost of the team to do this. 
And for the citizens, it's improved for them as well. The average cleanup rate from an incident being reported to it being dealt with has dropped from 10 days to only four. Massive improvement. That's a really great example. And I hope that this one, as well as the others, really inspired you to spot some potential opportunities in your organization already. And we can soon congratulate you on the achievement of your very first milestone, the identification and qualification of your first machine learning opportunities, as well as the formation of your first cross-functional team. Next, we'll explore how to validate the technical feasibility of your machine learning solution and building a first productive solution. So, see you in the next module.